They will stalk their prey down and pounce on it like a little kitty. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to say thank you to Micro Wilderness for sponsoring the video. If you don't know who Micro Wilderness is, they are a California-based tarantula and jumping spider vendor. They have a lot of really cool species. They are always getting new stock. So if you do want to pick up anything from Micro Wilderness, any Christmas presents, you need to put in your orders ASAP because December 6th is the cutoff for shipping until after the holidays. Link to Micro Wilderness is down below. Check them out. Now let's get into the video. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about 10 major differences between jumping spiders and tarantulas. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but there are some differences in care that I've come to notice and realize over the past few years keeping both. And I thought this would be a good guide for those who maybe get a jumping spider and eventually transition into tarantula care. Because I know there's a lot of people that kind of use jumping spiders as a gateway to the tarantula hobby, which is what I did pretty much. But also there's a lot of people who get a tarantula and then later on get into the jumping spider hobby. So although it is kind of like the same thing, it's also not. <laughs> so hopefully this will kind of help people learn the differences and just like simple care. And and all of that. So I don't really have it numbered to where like one is more important than the other, but I did think of like 10 points and I don't know, I, I they're all important. So like number one and number 10 are exactly as, Im they're like all important, like equally. So I guess just pay attention. Don't fast forward it to like the end to see what, what the most important point is because it's not going to be at the end. I think all of it is important anyway. <laughs> I guess let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is enclosure size. So jumping spiders are very curious little spiders and they're much more active than tarantulas. Jumping spiders do make like little web hammocks, but tarantulas have like a burrow that they stay in like 95% of the time. And what I've noticed with my jumping spiders is they tend to leave their little web hammocks during the day and then they will go into their web hammocks to sleep at night. Sometimes I joke that it's like their bed or whatever, but jumping spiders, you know, during the day it's like bright. They like bright light. They like to come out and they like to walk around and they're active. Tarantulas are just like the total opposite. They're like, oh, it's bright. I don't like this. I want the dark. I want a small hole. I don't want to go anywhere. And that is why the enclosure size needs to reflect that. So like tarantulas, I know a lot of people ask me often like why do you keep them in such small enclosures and it's just because they don't really utilize the space like there's nothing wrong with it if you want to keep your tarantula in a larger enclosure than usual like that's totally fine but I've seen a lot of people get like a 10 gallon enclosure with like a little grandma stola rosea and then the spider will make a little hole in the corner and never leave the hole and so like the whole other part of the tank is just kind of like empty and feeders sometimes get like lost and hide over there so yeah that's like why people tend to do just like a small enclosure for tarantulas but jumping spiders are the opposite they want to come out they like to like wander around so definitely keep all of that in mind when selecting your enclosure for either one of them now another big difference here between jumping spiders and tarantulas is their eyesight jumping spiders tend to have excellent eyesight compared to tarantulas tarantulas mostly rely on their really sensitive hair to kind of sense things around them their eyes are somewhat functional but they mostly can just tell like light versus dark but jumping spiders are predators they even prey on like other spiders so their vision kind of reflects that because as you know they'll need it for survival. Tarantulas simply don't need it. So to piggyback off of that now let's talk about their intelligence. Okay, so tarantula intelligence is very debated online. I see a lot of people talk about like, don't give your tarantula human emotions and this and that. I personally don't really see a huge issue with that. I do tend to um, pretend my tarantulas love me, but deep down inside, I know that they don't even know who I am. They will never bond with me. Just scientifically, we know they don't like learn and stuff, but jumping spiders, however, there is a little bit more going on in their head. In fact, they can kind of learn to bond with you. They can get to know you a little bit more. They can learn to tolerate handling. Tarantulas will just simply never get comfortable with handling. I mean, everybody has good days and bad days, including tarantulas, but you can't like tame down a tarantula and get them like used to 
handling because they simply just don't have that cognitive ability like jumping spiders seem to have which makes my fourth point a little more devastating but the lifespan difference is definitely significant between tarantula species and jumping spider species one of my least favorite things about jumping spiders are their very unfair lifespans so jumping spiders tend to live approximately two years which is barely a fraction of what most tarantula species will live especially female tarantulas who in comparison could live somewhere between 20 and 30 years depending on the species of course you just don't see that kind of lifespan and any species of jumping spider at least that I know of it just seems like across the board jumping spider lifespans are cut much much shorter than tarantulas which makes it a little difficult knowing that they can and do bond with you to an extent and then you like lose them much sooner it kind of reminds me of keeping like rats as pets or hamsters a lot of those more interactive fuzzy cute animals that will kind of grow to get to know you and then it just makes it really hard because they really grew to know you and you grew to know them so it, it's yeah it's it's the worst part of keeping jumping spiders in my opinion and my favorite part of keeping tarantulas or at least one of my favorite parts is the fact that they live so long I don't really have to worry about just getting attached and only to have them you know pass away live out their lifespan and pass away so soon but next let's talk about food frequency so because jumping spiders don't tend to live as long I think it has something to do with their metabolisms being faster than a tarantulas I'm not like a hundred percent sure so don't take that as fact but because jumping spiders spiders are so much more active they tend to need to eat much more often than tarantulas like I've had tarantulas go like months without eating but I've never been able to keep a jumping spider alive at least if they're not eating within like a couple weeks like jumping spiders can fast too but they need to eat and be offered prey much more frequently I feed my jumping spiders at least like three or four times a week or at least I offer them food they don't always take it but it's just good to always be offering them food but my adult tarantulas they won't see a hornworm or anything for like three weeks sometimes if their abdomen is like really fat I will even go longer or if they look like they're in pre-molt then I won't feed them really either so yeah jumping spiders definitely need to be offered prey much more often than tarantulas so while we're on the topic of food frequency let's also talk about how they attack prey tarantulas are really opportunistic they stay in their little space they stay in their little burrow and whatever happens to cross their path is what they will eat they don't really go out looking for food i mean they'll kind of stick their little feet out of their burrow if they're really hungry and hope that something walks by but they don't really get out of their burrow to go hunt unless they're like on the brink of starvation jumping spiders are the complete opposite it's really fun to watch them eat because they're really animated and they will stalk their prey down and pounce on it like a little kitty they have that good eyesight and they'll see a cricket across the enclosure it's fun to watch tarantulas eat but i do think it's a lot more fun to watch a jumping spider kind of stalk and wiggle their butt a little bit before they like get the cricket <laughs> another big difference is handling so i've noticed in the jumping spider hobby they're much more okay with handling than in the tarantula hobby i see a lot of people who keep jumping spiders really kind of proudly show off how how easy it is for their jumping spider to actually like go on their hand and like tolerate the handling because they've kind of tamed them down jumping spiders they will learn to be handled and tamed and it just seems much more accepted in the jumping spider hobby whereas in the tarantula hobby i mean i know that i've gotten heat for like being somebody who handles my tarantulas i and you know i take precautions and uh, i know the risks and yeah so i i do handle both my jumping spiders and my tarantulas but it does make a little bit of sense when you think about it because tarantulas don't have that capacity to really learn that handling is not going to be a threat to them so they will always respond instinctually which is much more unpredictable also when it comes to handling jumping spiders can be really fast and really jumpy so you do want to be careful i always have a catch cup when i handle my jumping spiders and tarantulas because they can move really fast and they can jump i've been like filming a jumping spider before and having it have it like jump on the lens but they bounce okay like they're good at like surviving a big jump tarantulas aren't like they have a really delicate big abdomen of course there are arboreal tarantulas so 
I mean, do keep that in mind. Typically, a tarantula is not going to be as bouncy if they jump off or fall or whatever, so it's definitely much more risky to be holding a big, fat, new world terrestrial tarantula versus a little jumping spider that can hop around and survive a fall. Uh, probably not like a big fall, but like, that's what they do. I mean, you know, I see jumping spiders climbing all the way down the side of our building very often and jump and fall and leap around and, and they make it and they're good. <laughs> a tarantula could never. <laughs> Another aspect worth mentioning is the breeding differences. So tarantulas can be bred and typically not all species, like I do know that there are some species that can double clutch, which means they can pair once and then lay like two egg sacs. So it isn't really common, it's possible, but, but most species they can only be paired once and then lay one egg sac. Jumping spiders are so different. I've had some jumping spiders lay up to five egg sacs off of one pairing, specifically chai. The egg sacs do tend to get smaller with like every clutch, but yeah, that's a lot of egg sacs that can happen off of one pairing. So if you do decide to get into like breeding jumping spiders or you get a wild caught one that lays an egg sac, don't think that that first egg sac is all that's coming because subsequently there can be more and more and more and more. Another thing that's kind of worth mentioning though with that is that like tarantula females will sometimes eat their egg sacs and that just seems to be much more rare for jumping spiders. Like, like I've never had a jumping spider eat an egg sac. I've, I've had so many egg sacs, I've never had one just like get eaten by the mother or not make it. They seem to like really like be good at like hatching and like exploding in the enclosure, like just babies everywhere. I think we're at like number nine now, which is color variation. So a Brachypilma homori will look like a Brachypilma homori every time. A Gramostola pulchra is always going to be black, but when it comes to jumping spiders, especially the Phytopus regius species, although all the males look pretty much the same, the females have this amazing color variation that is, it's, they almost don't look like the same species sometimes because you'll get an orange female, a white female, a really pretty like brown mocha colored female, really cool like black females and their colors are on their teeth are gonna be like different as well. You're gonna see like metallic pinks, metallic blues, greens, everything purples and they're like iridescent and just cool and it's, it's a lot of fun because it makes it to where you don't really know exactly what your spider's gonna look like when it's all grown up. If you get like a juvenile jumping spider, one that hasn't really gotten its adult colors yet, it's just like unexpected and you don't really know what you're gonna get. Um, personally, my favorite color variations are the oranges, like pumpkin, and I also really like the black females. Those are like a really pretty color. There's a lot of potential for really cool color variations. And number 10, the last thing I wanna talk about is the fact that jumping spiders can often be wild caught around your home. Now, not everyone has tarantulas like locally. You know, we only have one species of tarantula here, which is the Aphonopelma hensi. I don't really and I don't really hear about people like going out and like taking them and like keeping them Which is a good thing because we we want to get that captive breeding going in the hobby But yeah, a lot of people like <laughs> Europe you guys don't have like any tarantulas walking around But you guys do have jumping spiders from my understanding I know that your jumping spiders are much more puny compared to ours like we have the Phytopus regius Phytopus adox so many cool Phytopus species and Unfortunately your jumping spiders are teeny tiny and so a lot of you don't think they're as cool. I still think they're cool though. I love small jumping spiders. And yeah, so like if you're interested in the jumping spider hobby, it's just much more accessible for you to find a jumping spider like in your backyard to keep and like try out the hobby, see if you like it. Whereas a lot of people don't really have that opportunity for tarantulas. Like jumping spiders will come inside dwellings very often and establish like a little area that they'll live. And I even heard of people like having one that lives inside their window pane that they like started feeding and that really got them interested in jumping spiders and looking them up online and then and eventually they started keeping jumping spiders because of it and like that's pretty much exactly how I got into the tarantula hobby. So everybody technically has that availability for the most part, to go outside and find a jumping spider to keep. So yeah, I don't know, if you're interested in keeping a jumping spider, maybe one will come into your house and you can keep that one. Like, that's how I got milk, my little canopy jumping spider. But yeah, anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any other thoughts or any other differences that you think I should have mentioned, comment them down below. Maybe I'll do another video like this another time if you guys like it. And yeah, that's it. Like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not. 
And you want to be. Don't forget I have an Instagram that is probably way too much. It's at trainsa.cat. You can go follow me there. I have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. And I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet pick.